Channel Bay people flock to their beach for a night and day carnival organized by residents and local surf clubs. <laughs> Surfing events of all kinds filled in the afternoon with surf boats and life-saving teams participating. Some of the onlookers went for a dip too, and when the last drowning man had been rescued and all the water had been massaged out of him, the crowd looked in another direction, and there were a few stiff necks the following day. The winner was Miss Faye Kress, who was the blonde girl, number 11. That night, the show was still going on. Pyrotechnics were provided by the Air Force, and rockets lit up the neighboring suburb. At Akataro, near Wellington, a new machine for spreading fertilizer is being demonstrated to the Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Cullen, and experts from the Department of Agriculture. Powered by a small built-in petrol engine, the machine can spread two tons of super or lime per hour. Self-contained and weighing only 150 pounds in all, it can be moved by truck or may be dismantled and carried by pack horse to inaccessible areas. Especially designed for use in rough country, this machine should play an important part in increasing production in the hill country of New Zealand. Over 300 delegates met in Wellington the other week for a conference of dogs, called by the Wellington and Hutt Valley Kennel Club. There was some heated discussion on remit. They included family benefits, the laying of power lines underground, and the application of shaggy dog stories to other members of the animal kingdom. The delegates wouldn't let us film actual discussion, but allowed us to take these shots between debates. Next, please. Preparation of their speeches put a strain on delegates, which showed alarming results at mealtime. And in frequent scenes like this. Some gate crashes were found in this familiar car park. The social committee had some trouble with outsiders trying to smuggle themselves in. The chairman was a bit upset about it all, and not quite the thing, old man. This was a dog show, and here's the dog who's never been to one. Doggone it. And here's another dog that didn't make the show. Laddie's got no blue blood in his veins, or if he has, nobody knows about it. Still, his owner, Mr. Thompson of Otaki, is proud of him. There aren't any sheep here for Laddie to practice his skill on, so he has to be content with fowls. Every evening, when it's time for the hens to turn in, Mr. Thompson puts Laddie to work to round them up. It's no trouble to him. He can even sort the black ones from the white. And changing fowls from one run to another is just a few minutes' work for Laddie. Laddie never hurts them, but at times these dumb clucks have to be shown who's boss. Foul play? Not at all. His bark is worse than his bite. <coughs> If there's anything sillier than a wet hen, it's a scared one. Laddie's been doing this for years now, and it's all in the day's work. He's a sheepdog, but fowls are more in his line. They're just chicken feed. The Waikato district has been plagued with wasps for the past few years. Attracted by sweets and fruit juices, they damage fruit crops, eating out the flesh of the fruit and leaving only the skin. Jam making or preserving is a hazardous job for some Waikato housewives, and if the marauders are disturbed, they're likely to sting. They can sting repeatedly, and the pain is more severe than the bee sting. During the breeding season, they frequent water troughs. At this time, they worry stock, and cases have been reported of animals being stung to death. They're also a pest to beekeepers, invading honey houses and robbing beehives where there are weak colonies. Nests are generally built in a bank or in a hole in the ground and can be located by following the regular flight of wasps. 
A bag constructed of several layers of grayish paper made from wood pulp protects the tears of brood cells in the nest. Here are the drone, queen and worker. The queen is considerably larger than the other two, and here's one hatching out of its cocoon. The little fellow in the top right-hand corner is busy house-building. This exposed nest gives us a chance to have a look at them at close quarters. The markings on them are black on a bright yellow body. They've spread rapidly, and in 1946 the Department of Agriculture instituted control measures. Part-time workers were sent out on request to dispose of nests. Several methods of destruction were tried out, including calcium cyanide, but were ineffective, killing only the wasps on the wing and not the grubs and eggs which hatched out in due course. The nests had to be dug out and burnt to be rendered harmless. The average nest produces several hundred queens. It's thought that queen wasps were carried here by airplane from overseas towards the end of the war. A large nest may produce up to a thousand, and as each queen may start another colony, their destruction is important. Ten percent DDT powder was later tried and found successful, and this was made available free of charge to the public, and they were shown how to use it. Field and research work is coordinated, and the Wallaceville Animal Research Station is experimenting with a synthetic honeydew, to which will be added a poison, which will attract wasps, but not bees. A bounty of frippance each was offered for queen wasps, during the hibernation period. The sleeping queen is easily picked up and can be dropped into methylated spirits or kerosene. Queues lined up at the wasp control office with the kills. 1,750 people collected queen wasps up to the end of December 1948. This boy made nearly 80 pounds, that's threepence a crack. Better proposition than collecting bottles. Over 118,000 queens were delivered in 1948 which means that many colonies less this year. Some came through the mail. It wasn't expected they'd bring them back alive. A publicity campaign was launched in the press to solicit cooperation from the public, and 10,000 posters were distributed in post offices and public buildings throughout the North Island. Talks were given over the radio, and school children were instructed in methods for keeping down the pest. Every effort has been made by the Wasp Control Office to enlist the help of farmers, local bodies, and the public generally in the campaign. In 1945, the wasps were first seen in the Hamilton area. Climatic conditions appear to be favorable, as they've spread rapidly. In 1946, the increase was noticeable, but by 1947, the spread was even more marked and had reached Raglan on the west coast. In 1948, the wasps had reached as far north as Auckland and to the south, Taumaranui. This year, 1949, the map shows an even wider spread. To Helensville in the north, Taihapi in the south, Opotiki in the east, and New Plymouth in the west. It's during the hibernation period that the pest spreads widely. Queens hibernate in the folds of sacks and get carried perhaps a hundred miles or more when the sacks are returned to the factory for refilling with lime. They're carried in the same way on logs which may be sent to another district to be milled. It is not thought possible to eradicate wasps completely, but with vigilance and prompt action, their spread can be restricted and the pest can be kept under control. <laughs> 